I awoke to find Moussillon, a pale shadow of its glorious past, overrun with vermin, its lands annexed by its neighbors, its very name a byword for despair and failure. But now, I have returned. Now, Moussillon will rise again, and you, my brothers, will rise with it. Duke Merovech of Moussillon, also known as Merovech the Mad, Merovech the Butcher, the Dark Lord of Moussillon, and formerly the Savior of Bretonia, was the bloody-handed ruler of Moussillon, a fearsome warrior and strong leader, his desperation to restore the glory of his dukedom would lead him to become an extremely powerful blood knight, feared throughout Britonia for his bloodlust. Around 1813 IC, the Red Pox swept through the fair lands of Britonia, killing many of its inhabitants. In that time, Merovech was Duke of Moussillon, and a proud warrior looking with envy upon the glory days of the realm, during the reign of the mighty Landuin, first Duke of Moussillon, and greatest of the Grail Companions. He was desperate to restore the prestige that his city had in those distant times. With honorable intentions, but led astray by corrupt advisers, Merovech set upon the path of dark powers. Thus it came that when the plague struck, the duke and his knights remained unaffected. Seeing his chance for glory, he mustered his men and rode out against the vile rat men who beset the lands of Britonia. He rode south, broke the siege of Brion, believing he was Landuin reborn. He followed the same route as Gilles le Breton and his grail companions had taken, and headed east to Athaloran. He relieved Canel from a siege at the edge of the enchanted forest. He met with the armies of Paravon and the Fey folk and battled the Skaven. A great victory was won, and the rat creatures scattered before the martial might of Merovech and his most trusted knights. In the middle of the battle, he was soaked in blood, reveling in the killing. Even after his foe lay unmoving, still he continued to hack at them with his gore-soaked blade. The virtuous and honorable knights of Paravon looked on in horror. All were invited to celebrate the victory upon the Skaven with a great banquet in the halls of Moussillon Castle. However, the guests were most horrified by what they saw. Dinner was served by shambling, Corpse-like servants and spitted and impaled criminals were set around the hall. Merovech, drunk and feeling ill-appreciated, claimed to be dishonored. The king expressed his revulsion at what he saw, upon which Merovech accused the king of jealousy and conspiring against the savior of Britonia. The people of Moussillon tell of how the king then challenged him, refusing to let one of his dukes battle in his stead. The duel started. It was fierce, and Merovech fought like a demon. The two combatants clashed throughout the great hall until finally, with rage in his heart, Merovech tore out the king's throat. The duke then filled a goblet with the king's blood and drank from it. Many have since claimed there was no duel, 
that the king was simply murdered by his insane and unchivalrous subject. Regardless, upon witnessing Merovef's act of bloodthirst, the other dukes hastily retreated from Moussillon, pursued by a horde of twisted creatures and malformed peasants. The citizens of Moussillon were led to believe that despite his reputation, Merover had been chosen to succeed the murdered king. In truth, the Fey Enchanters had already denounced him as a traitor alongside the newly crowned Royarch. Lyonnais mustered its troops and led a massive invasion of Moussillon, and many of its knights gladly took up arms against their insane ruler having no wish to be associated with their liege lord and swearing fealty to Lyonnais. Faced with the might of all Bretonia, Merovech was defeated and slain, though many brave warriors fell beneath his blade. After his demise, Lyonnais absorbed a large portion of Moussillon into their own dukedom, leaving only its most tainted lands behind. Though wildly vilified and despised, many notable knights and families owed Merovech for saving them from the Skaven armies. After his death, they banded together and in spite of the new king's wishes, built a mighty tomb for the dead duke. The huge stone mausoleum, the size of a small keep, was constructed near the center of Moussillon. After many centuries, his tomb sunk into the marshes of Moussillon and was thought lost forever. Many a questing knight set out to find the tomb, but none ever succeeded. Revenge Tonight is the dawning of a new era in Moussillon's history. Once, our realm was the most powerful in all Britonia. Now, we have a chance to reclaim that glory, you and I. Centuries passed before Merovech rose from his tomb, revealing himself to have been a powerful vampire. Restored to full potency, he towered over mortal men and moved with unnatural precision, as if his armor was a second skin. The armor he donned was of an archaic, old-fashioned style, fluted and with serrated barbs at its edges. It was of such dark steel that it was almost black and was completed by a helmet that had been forged to resemble a snarling dragon. The vampire never carried a shield, but bore a pair of unholy blades strapped at his side, encrusted with dark runes. He bore no heraldry other than a simple black fleur-de-lis, the ancient symbol of Moussillon. His first action upon his return was to overthrow the Vargulf leader of Moussillon, known as the Old One, imprisoning the beast and taking control of its undead followers. A sizable army began to take shape, but the duke still needed to search for a champion. Infiltrating tournaments under the guise of a noble knight of the realm, Merovec discovered two young brothers, Calar and Bertelis of Garamon. He would go on to fight Bertelis, and whilst he defeated his opponent with ease, he was greatly impressed with the young knight's potential. Merovech bided his time, visiting Bertelis after a series of tragic events had resulted in his brother denouncing him. The morose and bitter young knight accepted the vampire's offer to train him, eventually accepting the blood kiss. With his champion chosen, 
Merovech decided to seal their bond with damnation. The two blood knights traveled to Castle Garamor, where the pair slaughtered an entire garrison of knights and men-at-arms, drinking the blood of the slain and burning Garamor to the ground, erasing Bertelis's ties to that realm. Returning to Museon, he then summoned corrupt nobles from all across Britonia to aid his cause, and resurrected his long-dead bodyguard of elite blood knights, adding to what was becoming a fearsome army. He was now close to enacting his revenge and conquering all of Britonia. Your master's going to die, said Kalar as Bertelis closed the distance between them. I think not, said his brother. No devolved Vargulf is a match for him. Several years into the vampire's plan, Kalar of Garamon, now a questing knight, arrived within the cursed city of Musillon. He was disguised as one of the many disgraced knights who had answered the Duke's call to war, and planned to exact revenge upon the one responsible for sacking his home. Galar's attempt to kill Merevech would not go as planned, however, for he discovered Bertelis slaughtering knights with a dueling ring under the gaze of his new master. As the two brothers fought, ghouls burst into the castle, led by none other than the Old One. Kalar's arrival had allowed the Vargulf's few remaining followers to release it and launch an attack. While his undead servants fought against a tide of ghouls, Merovech entered into a mighty duel with the vampiric beast. Taking his fight to the balcony above, he danced and weaved like a dervish, ducking under blows that would have torn him in half, twin blades flashing. He moved with preternatural speed, but the monster he fought was almost as quick, despite its bulk. Soon enough, the creature was bleeding from a dozen wounds, but it did not slow. The old one caught Merovech in a glancing blow that sent the duke skittering across the ground, causing the Vargulf to roar in victory and leap after him. He recovered quickly, however, and rolled under the blade-like talons that hammered down towards him. As he came to his feet, both blades carved bloody furrows across the monster's chest, and it hissed in pain. Using the immense beast's arm like a ladder, Merovech turned and leapt lightly up his enemy's body, spinning both swords around in his hands so that they were pointed downwards, like daggers. Kicking off the beast's chest, he turned in mid-air and plunged both swords into its neck. The old one bellowed. Both swords were embedded to the hilt, their tips protruding from the back of its neck as it thrashed around in pain. It reached up and ripped both weapons free, hurling them away from it, and blood gushed from the wounds. Such a blow ought to have been fatal, but the beast merely shook its head and dropped to all fours and began stalking towards the now unarmed Duke Merovech. In the chaotic battle below, Kalar, having witnessed Merovech being disarmed, briefly hoped that the Old One would be the Vampire's doom. Alas, the ancient monster was ultimately brought down, blood pooling beneath it. 
Its flesh was slashed and torn, hanging from it in bloody tatters. Duke Merover stood before it then, a recovered sword in hand, as the Vargul's powerful legs bunched for one final spring. But it was never given the chance. The Blood Knight hurled his sword aside and leapt towards his enemy with a blood-curdling battle cry, hands extended like claws. He grabbed the immense creature by the head, grappling with it, and with a roar of effort, he wrenched it upwards, exposing its neck. His fangs flashed, and he tore it into the Vargul's neck. The creature fought against him, but its strength was gone. For long moments, Merovech drank, glutting himself before pulling away. Then, he dragged the immense weight of the Vargulf across the floor until he reached a distant altar. He forced its neck back and lowered his mouth to its neck once more. This time, he did not feed, but rather tore. He ripped open its throat and the last of its blood gushed forth. As he threw his foe's broken corpse onto the dueling ring below, he witnessed Bertelisa's destruction. The sudden arrival of the ghouls and their master had distracted his dark champion, allowing Kalar to pierce his brother's heart with the sword of Garamon before retreating from the castle. Maravert dropped to one knee alongside Bertelisa's ashen corpse, and something approaching sorrow ghosted across the duke's features as he placed a hand upon the fallen knight's chest. Nevertheless, he would not be set back by the death of his favored pupil. He would continue to amass his dark army and march upon the realm of Britonia, bringing vengeance with him. He could see the towering walls of Britonia's capital, pennons fluttering in a wind Kalar could not feel. Stormy skies roiled above the white towers, and battlements and lightning flashed. Tens of thousands of warriors were embroiled in desperate battle, and Kalar's eyes widened. Scores of trebuchets were firing from atop Kuron's walls, hurling great chunks of masonry into the endless horde, and the sky was dark with arrows. Thousand strong formations of knights sallied forth in glorious charges, only to be surrounded and dragged down by the endless ranks of the dead. Kala's breath caught his throat. He was witnessing the death of his nation. The Duke of Moussillon was last seen at the head of his vast army, having fought his way to the very gates of Kuron itself. He and his elite cadre of vampire knights, his seneschals, carved a swath through the Bretonian lines, butchering all who stood against them. Mounted on black horses with eyes that glowed like coals, they thundered forwards, smashing knights from their saddles, cutting down Britonia's finest with contemptuous ease. More knights pressed in to hold their rampage, but all fell before their murderous wrath. Faster and stronger than any mortal man, these vampire knights fought with callous ferocity. Their eyes were red-rimmed and savage, their slitted pupils dilating as their bloodlust surged. They struck with such force that shields shattered beneath their axes and blades. Their lances punched straight through armored breastplates, lifting warriors from the saddle and tossing them aside like children. 
Merovech fought like a demon, lips pulled back to expose his elongated canines. Blood splattered across his snow-white face as he hacked a questing knight's head from his shoulders and thundered on, driving his heavily armored nightmare steed towards the immense gates of Kuron. He slashed left and right, killing with every stroke. The center of the Bretonian battle line buckled inwards, threatening to break at any moment. Suddenly, a shadow descended from above as King Luan Leoncur joined the fray, mounted atop a ferocious hippogriff. For a while, the king defeated all who stood before him, but eventually, a lucky blow sent his mound crashing down, pinning him beneath its bulk. Dozens of loyal knights pushed forward, interposing themselves before their liege and the murderous vampire knights, selling their lives dearly. Merovech began to laugh as he killed the hideous sound booming out across the battlefield. The outcome of the battle balanced on a nice edge as the fell duke hacked down the knights standing between him and the king. He slammed his sword into the standard bearer's neck, the blade biting through armor, bone, and flesh, and the royal banner fell. He loomed over his stricken foe and readied his blade. The killing blow would never land, however, for Kalar of Garamon had succeeded in his quest for the Grail. Riding atop a mighty wars and wielding a blazing lance, the Grail Knight rushed into the battle at the head of a wood elf wild hunt. Unholy seneschals, their eyes filled with hatred, moving to interpose themselves between Kalar and their Dark Lord. Each was a mighty warrior and champion in their own right, but even so, they could not hope to slow the Grey Knight's furious charge. Before long, the last of the dreaded seneschals had fallen to Kalar's holy wrath. It was then that the fell Duke of Moussillon swung towards him, turning away from the fallen Bretonian king, still trapped under the weight of his massive steed. His face was the white of untouched snow, his expression arrogant and dismissive. His hair too was like alabaster, hanging down his black armored back. He held his jagged sword loosely, the blade would have taken a strong man to lift it two-handed, yet the undead warrior drew a second blade as Kalar bore down on him, twirling the twin blades. Kalar had seen the vampire lord fight. He knew of his ungodly speed and the brutal power that was contained within him. Time seemed to slow, galloping at full speed, Kalar saw every detail of his foe in the moment before they clashed. He saw the aristocratic disdain in Merovech's eyes, eyes that gleamed like a wolf's, reflecting back at Kalar the holy light that surrounded him. He saw the dimly glowing runes along the length of the vampire's mighty swords, and he saw each individual raindrop coming down, splashing off his enemy's fluted black armor. Kala rose in the saddle to deliver the strike. His lance, Elith Einar, speared towards the vampire's chest. But with preternatural speed, one of Merovech's blades swung up to deflect it with an elegant circular parry. With the smallest twist of the wrist, Kalal caused the tip of his elven lance to roll around the vampire's blade, avoiding the deflection. Merovech's other blade came up, 
but in a display of skill and speed that surpassed even the Vampire Lord's abilities, Kalar again rolled his wrist, and the flaming tip of Elith Einar flicked around his second blade. The lance tip took Merovech in the throat, punching out the back of his neck in an explosion of dark blood. Kalar released his grip on the lance and continued on past the vampire as it fell to its knees. Hauling on the reins, Kalar brought his steed back around sharply. Dark blood pooled beneath the vampire and his eyes registered the creature's shock. He tried to speak, but nothing emerged from his mouth but a splatter of blood. Kalar swung from the saddle of his warhorse and stormed towards the Duke of Moussillon, the sword of Garamond blazing in his hand. The vampire tore the lance from its throat and rose to meet him. Merovech had lost one of his swords, the other one he gripped in both hands. He hissed and hurled himself at Kalar. The sword of Garamond came up, smashing Merovech's sword aside. Kalar allowed his momentum to carry him around, so that he had his back turned to his enemy. With a movement so fast, it was little more than a blur. He spun his sword around so that he was holding it in a downward, dagger-like grip, left hand resting upon the pommel. He surged backwards, driving his sword into Merovech's chest. The blade slid deep, only halting when the hilt was pressed against the vampire's breastplate. It was over. The vampire's mouth opened wide in a final, soundless scream. His flesh began to wither and blacken, like parchment beneath a candle flame. Kalar wrenched his sword free, and the creature that had been Merovech fell to the ground, collapsing to grave dust. The entire army of the dead dropped, the dark magic binding and animating them dissipating. The rain ceased, and a howling wind began to clear the sky. Knights leapt forward to aid the king, while others, bloodied and battle-weary, gazed around them blankly, not yet comprehending that the battle was finally over. Merovech. Vampire Duke of Moussillon was no more.